What's up, you guys? Welcome back again to your HeroClix headquarters. Today, we're going to be continuing our full set review of Wheels of Vengeance with the Super Rares. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, um, unfortunately, this set hasn't been too kind to me with Super Rares. I got a lot of duplicates that I haven't managed to trade off yet, so I'm missing quite a few Super Rares. The first one I'm missing that we're starting off with here is Man-Thing. And now I will say at first glance, he doesn't seem great, but he's 90 points and only has like six clicks of health. Um, now he's got Defender's Team Ability, Phase Teleport, uh, the Fish Symbol, you know, the Swim Ability, uh, 12 Attack with Poison, 17 Invul, and 3 Damage Exploit. You know, nothing about that seems amazing so far, but he's got some pretty cool traits. Uh, and his keywords are Defenders, Legion of Monsters, Midnight Suns, Monster, Mystical, Thunderbolts, and Warrior. Uh, and he also has improved movement for elevated and blocking, which is pretty cool. But yeah, his first trait here gives him plasticity, and when Man-Thing is damaged by an opposing character within four squares, after resolutions, you may place him adjacent to that character. Man-Thing takes a maximum of one damage from attacks, can't be healed, can't be chosen for Mastermind, Protected Pulse Wave. So it sucks he can't be healed, but he takes a maximum of one damage from attacks, so that will mean he'll have to be hit uh, at least six times before he goes down, which is pretty great. And yeah, you can't mastermind onto him either though, unfortunately. But then on his special attack power, he's got poison. And when Man-Thing uses it, he instead deals damage equal to half his click number rounded up. So uh, just regular poison those first two clicks, then you round up. So click three, he'd be doing uh, two, two uh, click three and four would be two damage from poison. And then click five and six would be three damage from poison. Pretty awesome. Uh, it's not penetrating or anything, but you know, those characters that don't have any reducers are really not going to want to be next to this guy. And he's got that traded plasticity, so uh, you know, that's going to be really annoying. Plus, if they shoot at him, he just gets to place himself next to them. So it's going to be pretty hard to deal with that. Uh, you know, face teleport to just run up on them, or otherwise, you know, you shoot at him and you get him stuck next to you. And then he just burns you with poison. That's pretty cool. And, you know, taking the max one damage and everything, it's going to take a lot to fend him off. And that's just going to make his poison do that much more damage. But anyway, he also has a defense special that gives him toughness. And when this click is revealed after resolutions, generate a water terrain marker in his square. Uh, not too bad. You could, you know, get some kind of protection from the swim ability from that. Except one thing, I feel like they need to update the swim ability yet again. Because with the last update to the swim ability, when they uh, changed it in like 2021 or whatever, um, they changed it so that opposing characters had to be within four squares to target you. And now that in 2023, they just changed all of the minimum ranges to four and a lot of characters only have like four range, like normally. Uh, I feel like it just doesn't really do as much. Like it's not as impactful. Most things have to be within four anyway now. So although yes, it does hurt those characters that do happen to have longer ranges, just on average, everything's four anyway. So I feel like they need to adjust that down again, maybe to two or three, um, depending, you know, how strong they want to make it. Two squares might be a bit much, but at least three, I feel like. At least make them come a little closer. Anyway, uh, rant about the swim ability over. I think overall, man, thing's pretty good. I still think a 90 points is a pretty, you know, hefty investment there, but he can definitely be worth it if you're playing him right. Um, he really just needs to kind of stick to a bunch of people and slowly poison them all to death. And, you know, he has pretty high attack to start with, with exploit, so he can definitely get some damage in there. Um, you can have somebody with defender's team ability help his low defense in the beginning, or vice versa, when he gets to that 19 later, he can be defending up your other defender's TA characters. So, you know, not bad overall. He's pretty cool. I can see why they wouldn't have given him like a lower starting line because then you would just Im get immediate access to that poison and that might be a little too much. Uh, but overall, I still kind of just feel like they should have kicked his points down a few, maybe. <laughs> just like, it makes me think of uh, the Catwoman we just got. I mean, she's also 90 points and she also only takes one click of damage, but she's got like nine clicks of health compared to his six. So I feel like he should have been like 
60 or 70 points, maybe. I don't know. Either way, he's still pretty decent and probably the best man thing we've had yet. All right, but next up, one I do actually have here, Zadkiel, or, you know, however you pronounce that name. This dude is pretty freaking awesome looking. I will say, you know, that sculpt on those wings, that flaming sword, the armor all looks pretty freaking sweet. So, uh, yeah, let's take a look at what they can do here. Uh, has Cosmic, Deity, Herald, and Mystical Keywords, uh, Power Cosmic, Team Ability. And then a starting trait here says free. An opponent generates a Spirit of Vengeance bystander friendly to their force into any square on a map edge. Then Zadkiel chooses a listed effect to use until your next turn. Regen as free, modify attack and defense plus two, or pulse wave as free. Not too bad. He is 200 points, so that is a lot. But uh, you got running shot with 8 movement, uh, with a 6 range, 12 attack, energy explosion, 19 impervious, and 5 damage with prob control, and a whopping 11 clicks of health, full of impervious and invuln, and uh, just pretty high stats in general for most of it, and good power combos there. So I think overall, you know, pretty decent dial, you know, it's definitely filling up that 200 points, it's, it's not like it's not worth it. Uh, and then you've got the, another trait here that says opposing characters can't use stop, which is honestly one of the best things about this character. Uh, that one trait right there is just so powerful against certain characters. I really love that. Uh, Zadkiel deals penetrating damage to characters with two action tokens. Also not bad, because just whenever, you know, you catch your opponent with two action tokens, you can get that extra penetrating damage in. Um, you know, well, it's not really extra, but you know what I mean. You can get through their defenses, get through their reducers and stuff. Uh, so that's always nice. Then you have Spirit of Vengeance token here that they get to generate. And that just has Hypersonic with a 7 movement, 11 attack, 2 damage, exploit, and 17 super senses. And also has a trait that when Spirit of Vengeance is given a second action token, KO it. So it's like it uh, doesn't have willpower it's gotta it's gotta push you guys it's old school pushing damage to ko the bystander <laughs> but yeah i mean that's not too bad they get to generate that one thing i wish this dude had mystics i feel like he should because it just kind of screams like a mystical character that should have mystics that you wouldn't want to hit <laughs> for some reason um, plus, that would just be nice for such a, you know, big 200-point character. Honestly, though, this guy's pretty cool. I did play a random game with him against um, my friend's Doomsday. And, you know, he just cut right through those uh, stop clicks and everything. Opposing characters not being able to use stop is actually so good. Uh, especially with, like, you know, there's a Scott Porter that has stop. There's, like... You know, those little 35-point uh, Apocalypse and Genesis that have stop, you can just blast straight through them. Um, all kinds of other characters. Anybody with stop, you know. There's so many good, cheap characters with stops, and even really big, expensive characters like Doomsday. They're just full of stop clicks. And just being able to ignore all that is so good. Plus, having such great stats and just being able to take these amazing uh, free actions basically any time you need them. Pulse Wave is free to clear out, you know, a bunch of characters. Uh, modify Attack and Defense plus two to get your stats to like 14 for 21. You know, that's pretty amazing. Or just regen is free. If you start getting injured, you just start regening yourself for free. Uh, I played this guy with, of course, both Scott Porters and I think Orb and some equipment on somebody. I think I gave him the Pumpkin Bobs for the, the three damage energy explosion. So that's a pretty fun team. Honestly, uh, this dude is just so much better than I originally thought. I think he does have some potential to play for 200 points, honestly. Probably not going to be winning worlds with him or anything like that, but he can surprise you. The only downside, really, is that, uh, yeah, he could just get Penetrating Blasted for, like, massive damage or Exploit Weakness for massive damage because he doesn't have, like, Invincible or anything. And as long as he doesn't just get instantly KO'd in one turn by a really strong team that can do a lot of Penetrating damage, then, yeah, he's pretty solid. All right, but up next, we've got Ghost Panther 2099, who is a pretty cool character here. Uh, gotta love the cross between a ghost rider and a black panther, and I love that uh, blue fire and that flaming chainsaw hand. All very cool. Uh, now, taking a look at the card here, she's got the Defenders team ability, Avengers, Defenders, Wakanda, Warp World, Future, Mystical, Robot, and Scientist keywords. Lots of good keywords there. 
Perplex and Shape Change traded. Uh, when Ghost Panther 2099 is KO'd, you may choose a friendly character with the robot keyword. This game, that character has this trait, Protected Pulse Wave, and you use that character's name in place of uh, Ghost Panther, obviously. Uh, so yeah, not bad. Traded Perplex and Shape Change is always good. I will say 90 points is a bit much, though, but at least you got a good long 8-click dial there. Charge, Combat Reflexes, and Outwit. And uh, you got Toughness. And when Ghost Panther 2099 clears action tokens, healer one click for each token removed. Not too bad. And then Blades, Claws, Fangs. When Ghost Panther 2099 uses it, before rolling, you may choose a number up to four to be the minimum result of the D6 roll. If you do, after resolutions, deal her unavoidable damage equal to half the chosen number. Oof. That kind of sucks uh, to hurt yourself to do that. But I feel like if you're going to do it, you know, if you pick three, you're still going to take two. <laughs> So you might as well go big or go home and pick four. Personally, I might not risk it at all. I might just roll the blades and hope for the best. But, uh, you know, you can guarantee that four damage, but it is going to cost you. Uh, I wish she had, like, steel energy as part of that. But at least she does have steel energy for the back half of her dial and the um, other trait that allows her to heal one for every action token she clears, which is pretty good. At least you have a lot of built-in healing to kind of counteract that if you uh, if you happen to use that for the extra damage on the blades. Um, you know, having outwit top dial as well as traded perplex is nice. You know, you got shape change, combat reflexes, and toughness, so there's a lot of layers to the defense there. Uh, not to mention defender's TA, so if you got a good defender nearby, you can kind of keep her defenses up, or she can keep their defenses up because she's got a lot of 18s. Uh, either way, not bad. I mean, overall, she's okay. I still think a little overcosted at 90 points. I feel like this is would have been better around, I don't know, 70 or so. Uh, just because to do any real damage, you have to you have to burn yourself a little bit on that uh, blades power picking, you know, uh, four as the minimum result, uh, and you'll take two for it. Although I will say that you know you take two, you land on flurry and uh, battle fury, so you could flurry blades, you know, pick two. And I wonder, hold on, let me reread that one more time because when you use that with the flurry. Uh, when she uses it before rolling, you may choose a number up to four to be the minimum result. If you do, after resolutions, you learn avoidable damage equal to the chosen number. So I'm guessing each time you, yeah, each time you use it, so each time you would flurry, you, you might deal yourself two and then two. Kind of a big oof there. Uh, and the next turn you'd have to clear, heal a couple back. Then maybe you could flurry with steel energy to heal up a couple. Um, but that's just assuming they don't just one shot you <laughs> right away. I don't know. Uh, it's very risky, very high risk, high reward, I guess, if you hit your attacks, um, and, and they don't just shoot you down. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think she's okay. I just like not great. I, if, if she was like 70 ish points or so, I would feel a little more comfortable with it. 90 points is a lot nowadays being 90 points and having to hurt yourself so much to really get that good damage in. I probably wouldn't play her too much, honestly, but it is a pretty cool figure nonetheless. All right, next up for the super rares, we have Lilith, who I do not have yet. Uh, so taking a look at her, she's 75 points, Mystic's team ability, starts with some phasing, penetrating blast, combat reflexes, and shape change, has improved targeting to make range attacks while adjacent, uh, oh, also has deity, monster, mystical, and ruler keywords. So our first trait here says the first time Lilith would be KO'd, instead turn her to click number 7, roll a d6, heal her equal to the result, protected pulse wave, um, so not bad. You got that, you know, once per game saving her life trait there. Um, and then you also have leadership when Lilith uses it and succeeds after resolutions generate a Lilin bystander. So anytime you can generate free bystanders or characters, that's always nice. And then she also has steel energy and when she uses it and heals until your next turn, she can use impervious even if this power is lost. So that's awesome too. If she just runs up and punches somebody and heals off the steel energy, you get the imperv for your next turn. And we'll take a quick look at what the Lilin bystanders do. They just have 6 movement with charge, 11 attack precision strike, 16 combat reflexes, 2 damage with empower, which is really nice. 
So yeah, just running up there with 11 attack, charge, hitting for one with precision at least, even if they have a reducer is pretty nice. But also just getting a bunch of those, you know, empowers around is great. It doesn't say anything here about having a max of those bystanders. So she could be pumping one out every turn if she just keeps getting lucky with leadership. So pretty cool character. I would say she's uh, a pretty fun one, more, more fun level for me because uh, she's just, you know, cool. Like, oh, she gets to make all the cool little bystanders. She gets to like save herself once per game from being KO'd. You know, she can heal off steel energy and have imperv. It's like she kind of switches between like a range attacker to a close attacker. That's always cool. You know, she's got decent stats the whole way. Um, not bad. I would give her probably a motorcycle for running shot because I just don't like that phasing top tile. Uh, I feel like she would need some running shot. And also that gives her passenger one on that click with the motorcycle. So then she could carry around, you know, a Lilin bystander with her or somebody else, maybe with enhancement or something for that penetrating blast. So overall, not too bad. You know, she's got some good power combos there with the shape change super senses in the middle. I do kind of wish her combat reflexes were pushed back a little bit, like in the middle or the end of her dial, and they kept the super senses up front with the shape change for the double rollouts. That would have been nice. So yeah, overall, she's nothing too crazy, but uh, she's a fun one. But next up, we have the Prime version of Lilith coming in at only 50 points this time, Mystics and Cosmic Energy team abilities. Um, Plasticity, Poison, Mastermind with a 19 defense and Support with a 3 damage, 11 attack for a range. Not too bad. Uh, she's more of a support character, obviously. She's got enhancement and empower traded and free. Place her adjacent to another friendly character that shares a keyword with her, which is uh, deity, monster, mystical, and ruler. So that's pretty great. She can just pop around the map adjacent to any of your friendlies that share keywords, and she can, uh, you know, enhance them or empower them or a role support for them to heal them up. So that's all really good and useful, obviously. But then she also has power once per game, choose a character with a monster keyword on your sideline. If that character's point value is less than the total point value of all your opponents, if that character's point value is less than the total point value of all your characters in your KO area, generate it on its starting click. Your opponent scores that character now instead of when it's KO'd. So it really just sucks that they get to score them immediately instead of when KO'd because, uh, you know, it's like you're just handing your opponent however many points. But you can bring in some really powerful stuff. Anything with the monster keyword that has less points than whatever has already been KO'd. So if they KO'd something that's like 60-ish points, you could bring in, say, a Carnage Silver Surfer. That would be pretty cool. Um, or even like a Black Lantern or something. I don't know. There's lots of really good monsters. An orb is really good with a monster keyword. Um, I'd probably save it for something a little stronger, but you don't want to like give your opponent too many points. I would not want to do it personally for a character that's over like 50 to 75 points. Otherwise, you're just practically handing your opponent the win at that point. Because not only have they already KO'd more than that many points, but you just also immediately gave them that. So... Yeah, oh, uh, it better better be a quick return on investment is what I would say. I mean, even without that, she's a great supporting character for monster teams. However, I do think being a prime is going to hurt her just because of that. You know, that prime slot is so, so good right now. Um, that could be a Spider-Man, that could be an Absorbing Man on the sideline, that could be Kamo, that could be a 10-point prime Hulk. You know, there's so many great primes right now. But besides that, she is really good at what she does. And if you need a good support character for your team, she is definitely going to help you out. I do wish she had maybe some perplex or prob or something in addition to the support. That would be nice. It's really unfortunate we don't still have access to the dark hold because I would love to give her that so she could pick one of those every turn. But regardless, uh, she's a pretty good prime. All right, but next up we have Chithon, who's freaking awesome, and I definitely need to get myself one of these. He is pretty high up on my wants list at the moment, so uh, I'm still working on getting one, but let's take a look at what makes him so awesome. So he has 300 points with Mystics, Cosmic Energy, 8 range triple target, but we're not really playing him at 300 points. Um, he's got Cosmic Deity, Monster, Mystical, Ruler, Keywords. You know, running shot, 12 attack penetrating for 5. You got shape change and impervious with a 19. 
So he's, you know, got great stats and powers there, you know, got a bunch of uh, stop clicks with Invincible on his special defense power there. So he is actually worth the 300 points. You could definitely play him at 300 points and actually, I think, do pretty well with him. Uh, he does have improved targeting for hindering and destroys blocking, which is amazing to see because it sucks to play a big 300-point character that just gets sniped at by stealthy characters and you can't really do anything about it but walk all the way over to them. So annoying. Uh, but I like to be able to shoot them myself from range. That's nice. And then he has uh, the first trait here, which is the main thing that makes him so great. Sideline active. At the beginning of the game, choose a friendly character with a mystical keyword. This game, that character modifies his combat values plus one. And when that character is given an action token, if they're not named Chathon, deal them one unavoidable damage. So the cool thing there is that uh, sideline active just means that it is also active on the sideline. Don't forget, that means it's not only active on the sideline, it's still active on the map, it's just also active on the sideline. So he can, you can play himself for 300 points and he can choose himself for his own trait to give him plus one all stats. So in reality, he's actually 13 attack, 6 damage, 20 defense with a 9 range <laughs> and uh, 10 movement running shot, which is actually going to be plus 1. So he's going to running shot for 6 squares. So he can really just reach the whole map himself, triple targeting with a 13 for 6 penetrating glass. Not bad at all. You know, through hindering and blocking, very good. <laughs> so that's all amazing. And then he also has sideline active. When the character chosen for his Elder God, Demon of the Darkhold trait is KO'd, you may immediately generate Chithon from your sideline or KO area on click number one in the square that character last occupied. If you do, at the end of your next turn, you lose the game. Oof. So uh, I, that's not something I would really risk unless I'm just playing him at 300. So if they manage to get through all of his, you know, 11 clicks and four stop clicks and all that imperv and shape change and prob and everything, if they manage to work through all that, then he can come right back on click number one. And then you got one more turn to try and finish off your opponent or you just lose the game. So yeah, I wouldn't really use that unless the character that I had him assigned to, you know, if it's not himself, if they're like the last character standing and, or if like, you know, maybe I think there's a chance if I bring him in at his full dial there, he can just, you know, one shot the last couple characters on my opponent's team or with the other characters I might still have remaining, they can, you know, team up and, and finish off the opponent's team that turn. You know, it's really risky to just bet that all, but um, it is just nice to get the plus one off stats on everything. It just, one thing I will say, um, that is one of the main reasons I haven't gone out of my way to get this guy like right now. It's because I realized that, uh, you know, the plus one stats is great, but it's whenever they're given an action token, uh, they are dealt that one unavoidable, you know, it really sucks that it's like immediately after they're given that action token. So they get one action to go do something with the plus one stats. And as soon as they're done with that, boom, they take one unavoidable. So there's a lot of characters I want to put that on that immediately get worse. <laughs> like, all their stats are minus one on click two, so you're right there at the same stats you would have been. So you get the plus one stats for the one attack, and that's great. But, um, you know, characters can make multiple attacks, like some of these ghost riders, ghost surfer, that kind of stuff. It just kind of sucks. But there's a lot of mystical characters. I'm sure there are some that are probably the same or better stats, you know, for most of their dial that, that doesn't really care about taking the unavoidable. So you just got to kind of put him on the right character. It's just that everybody I've wanted to put him on so far, I kind of realized he's probably not actually that great to put on him. So I don't really need to bother with it too much. Uh, but regardless, it is a really, really cool power. And I hope we see more. Uh, they did tease that we're going to get more of these Elder God traits coming soon. So, you know, maybe we'll get one for different keywords like monster or who knows what. I don't know what what else they would do with with the Elder God thing, uh, but it'd be really cool. I'd like to see where it goes with that. And even besides all that, he's just a really awesome big 300 point character. And I'm just loving how great some of the most recent 300 point characters have been. It's like they finally get it. They finally understand the 300 point character needs to be good. It's your only team. It has to have ridiculously high stats and good powers and be hard to kill because a good 300 point team will destroy them. But yeah, anyway, he's awesome and I like him a lot regardless. 
But next up, we have another one I am hoping to get soon. We've got uh, Brother Voodoo for 75 points or 30 points. Mystics and shield team ability, four range double target. You got some energy shield, some prob, phasing. Um, and you've got mind control and toughness. And when Brother Voodoo uses mind control and hits after resolutions, deal each hit character that made an attack and missed during the action one penetrating damage. I do love that because it sucks to like hit a bunch of people with mind control and then they all miss their attacks. Like, oh, you got to move them around a little maybe, but then it kind of just feels like a waste. So being able to deal them a penetrating damage for missing is great. And then he also has a special attack power, free, choose an opposing character within range and line of fire, give them a doll token. When a friendly character with the Mystic's team ability takes damage from an attack after resolutions, deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character with one or more doll tokens, then remove all doll tokens from opposing characters. So that's pretty awesome. You're probably going to want to play him with some other Mystics just so they don't have to attack just him for that to go off. Uh, you want them to hit one of your other characters and then, you know, kind of spread the Mystic's damage around, which is really awesome. But yeah, I would say you pretty much play this guy at 30 points. Oh, I don't, I didn't go over his keywords. He does have Avengers, Heroes for Hire, Howling Commandos, Midnight Suns, Mystical, and Shield. So he's got a lot of good options there. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I would play him at 30 points because you're not gaining a whole lot for 75, the extra 45 points. You know, a few extra clicks of health, a slightly higher stats. But, I mean, I personally think 30 points for shield team ability, mystics team ability, prob control uh, is pretty great, you know? Plus, you have uh, the mind control thing, so you might as well, you know, if he, gets, uh, if he gets the opportunity, take a shot at some mind control. And that cool pins and needles special attack power if he's on a team with a bunch of mystics, that's gonna be pretty big. If he can uh, get a few of those doll tokens on some characters before one of your mystics gets hit, it's going to be doing a lot of extra damage to characters. So I like him a lot, actually. I think for 30 points, he's going to be pretty good. And up next, we have the Prime Brother Voodoo at 45 points. He's got mystics team ability, four range double target, phasing super senses with a 19 defense, and some uh, probability control, improved targeting for characters... Um, oh, he also has Avengers, Heroes for Hire, Howling Commandos, Midnight Suns, Mystical, and Shield keywords. But yeah, then he's got this first trait here that he starts the game with three Twisted Wish tokens. And free, remove a Twisted Wish token. If you do, choose one. Deal an opposing character within range, two penetrating damage, or heal any one character three clicks. So that's pretty awesome. I feel like I would just burn all of those on dealing the two penetrating damage for free. That is a whopping six penetrating damage he can deal out for free in the course of a game. No attack rolls or anything, just a character within range, an opposing character within range. So he's got a pretty decent four range, so he has to get kind of close up there, but uh, pretty awesome nonetheless. But he does have the downside that when a Twisted Wish token is removed from Brother Voodoo, after resolutions, an opponent may choose one. Place any two characters friendly to their force into each other's squares, or remove an action token from any character. So they do get a bit, little bit of a benefit for that. They get to swap some characters around or move an action token, um, which, you know, it could be pretty bad. So you got to kind of use that, you know, sparingly. <laughs> use that when you really need it. Like on some of those characters that only have two clicks of health, I would definitely use it on them or just to finish somebody off that's uh, on their last couple clicks as well. Um, or if you really, really need to heal up, you know, there's that. But then he's got another trait here that says, Once per game, when Brother Voodoo would be KO'd, you may instead remove a Twisted Wish token from him. If you do, roll a d6, turn him to the resulting click number, Protected Pulse Wave. Not bad. So you can save him once per game. Um, I kind of just feel like that should be as many times as you have a Twisted Wish token. <laughs> like, why not? Maybe you just want to save him and have him heal himself three times. Because you actually want to roll low on that so he comes in with more health. The higher you roll, the closer he'll be to just dying again. Uh, but then he also has Mind Control, Smoke Cloud, and Telekinesis for his special attack power. So overall, he's pretty great. Uh, you know, I do kind of want to get this figure because he's got some pretty interesting uses there with the wish tokens. Um, overall though, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda like the regular version a little bit better. For the 45 points, I mean, and like I said, there's so many good primes right now, it's just really hard to justify, uh, you know, using certain primes over others. I don't know, in my opinion, like, if I'm gonna play a prime, maybe it's just me, but if I'm gonna play a prime, I'm probably gonna play Spider-Man. Uh, and if I'm not playing a prime, 
then I'm probably going to put Absorbing Man on the sideline, which, even though I don't have him yet, <laughs> I've got to get one of those, but it's just, you know, it just kind of comes down to that. Like, you kind of have to really have a strategy built around your primes nowadays. And uh, this guy's cool, and you could definitely build around him. But he does still have some stiff competition. And like I said, 30 points for all the stuff the regular one can do is pretty great too. Um, and yeah, it's not using your your prime slot, so that's just kind of a bonus for him. But yeah, this one is pretty great still. I think actually the old prime Brother Voodoo was probably better back in his time. Uh, he did some pretty crazy cool stuff. So he does, this one kind of has some big shoes to fill with that aspect as well. Maybe I was expecting a little too much because it's another Prime Brother Voodoo. But like I said, he's pretty good and he does his job as a Prime, you know, doing some pretty interesting stuff that most characters can't do. All right, but up next we've got the uh, Alejandra Ghost Rider. This is one of my favorites. I like this one a lot. She looks really awesome. Um, I think I might like the sculpt of her, the Prime version of her, uh, from Fantastic Four a little bit more because she's like driving and she's like holding the the hook scythe thing out there And it's pretty epic, but this one's pretty awesome looking too. the flames plus, you know, this one glows in the dark So uh, there's that <laughs> That bonus that this one has Anyway, Fantastic Four, Symbiote, Animal, Monster, Mystical, and Vehicle keywords, and the Mystic's team ability, of course. So I do want to point out there that she has a Symbiote keyword, if you didn't catch that when I just said it. Uh, that means she can be equipped with either of the Symbiotes for free, you know, the black or the red. So that gives her, either way it gives her Steel Energy, and uh, black gives her Stealth, red gives her Blades. So there's that option for a free equip. Uh, but then she also has the pilot trait here for Fantastic Four or Mystical. And we've gone over the pilot trait in uh, the rares and stuff, but we'll go over it here because it's her first time seeing it in this video. So when revealing your force, you may choose a single base character on your sideline that has a Mystical or Fantastic Four keyword, um, you know, in her case, Fantastic Four or Mystical, and turn it to any click. Ghost Rider can use the standard attack and damage powers displayed on that character's dial. And when Ghost Rider is KO'd before removing her from the map, Generate the chosen character on its last non-KO click. This game, that character can't be healed or replaced and isn't scored when KO'd. Protected Pulse Wave. So yeah, the pilot trait is super awesome. There's a lot of great Fantastic Four and mystical characters to be her pilot. But then we'll take a look at uh, the back of her card here. She's got another trait that says when Ghost Rider is KO'd, place her on her card instead of removing her from the game. Next time another friendly character with a writer in its name is KO'd, after resolutions, place Ghost Rider from her card into the square that character last occupied on click number one. And uh, you got Charge, Flurry, and Improve Movement for characters there on her special movement power. So really awesome uh, that she just gets to come back into play. So you, that's one thing I would say you probably want to give her a pilot that is, you know, a rider, like a ghost rider or a death rider is a good one or something like that, you know, because you want to uh, be able to bring her right back in whenever the actual, you know, the pilot is KO'd. So whenever they pop out when she's KO'd, if, you know, they one-shot them because why not? They're on their last click, they might. Then she can just come right back in on click number one, full health. So you do lose access to the pilot abilities at that point, but hey, you get a whole new character, why not? So I think that's pretty awesome. And she does have some good stats and powers with the improved movement for elevated, hypersonic, 11 precision for three damage, 18 invincible, you got some prob. Uh, so yeah, pretty great. And then you got that charge flurry with close combat expert on the back half. So she's pretty great all around. I think I think she's got a lot of potential, you know, with the pilot, with the potential for the free symbiote equipment or any other equipment. There's a lot of stuff she can be doing and she can come right back onto the map after being KO'd. And that's so cool. And just playing her with a couple of other riders also if you don't uh, you know, if you don't want to use a writer for her pilot, you can just play her with a couple other ones and just run her out there and hope she dies first and then she just gets to come right back. So, uh, yeah, I, I really like her a lot, honestly. I think she's a lot of fun and I can't wait to play her some more. All right, but up next we've got the Rawhide Kid here who uh, kind of just like your classic cowboy, you know, jumping around on a horse. Pretty cool, though, and uh, this dude's actually pretty great. I was not expecting this guy to be as good as he is, but he's pretty awesome. So he's got the animal past police vehicle keywords, PD, and uh, team player team abilities. 
fastest draw in the West, Super Senses. When Rawhide Kid uses it and succeeds after resolutions, deal the attacker damage equal to Rawhide Kid's printed damage value. So, yeah, not bad. Uh, you gotta love Super Senses. It just damages them right back if you get it. Um, I would definitely suggest trying to get this guy to copy Spider-Man or Wonder Woman team abilities. Uh, just to get that plus one on the super sense rolls, because um, that's going to be awesome to just shoot them right back when they try to shoot you. Improved targeting can make range attacks while adjacent is always nice. Running shot, five range, precision strike, willpower, 11 attack, three damage. Um, he's really kind of banking on the super senses, though. His defense is pretty bad the whole way down. But then he's got this damage power that when Rawhide Kid hits, and you may choose an unhit opposing character adjacent to a hit character. If you do, after resolutions, deal that character to damage. Gotta love that. It's kind of like an energy explosion because it's, you know, two damage and they have to be adjacent. But what's cool about it is you don't have to hit them. You have to just shoot at somebody that you know you can hit like a weak support character with like a 17 defense or something. And then you get to just deal two damage to somebody next to them that even if they had like, you know, 19, 20, 21, whatever. And you're like, oh, I'll never hit that. They got like super duper senses and everything too. I'm not going to deal with that. Just shoot the guy next to him and then he can hit the, the harder to hit defense for free. Pretty awesome. And whenever they try to shoot at him, boom, he just shoots first, hits that super sense roll and says, no, you take that damage. And his printed damage value is at least three to start and then get some twos in the middles, but you're gonna be dealing three with that most of the time. Honestly, if I could, I would love to give this guy Spider-Man and Wonder Woman team abilities. Um, you know, equip him with the Wonder Woman gauntlets and play him with somebody that has a Spider-Man TA so he can copy that one. Then he got that plus two. Uh, although then I'd want some outwit protection on top of that, and then I feel like I'm probably pouring way too many points into a 50-point character. But regardless, this guy is really cool. Um, not the kind of character I thought I would be excited about, but he looks really, really fun to play, honestly. And I really love the whole cowboy, you know, fastest draw in the West kind of design here. So he's a very, very fun and interesting character. All right, but up next we've got the Headless Horseman who is coming in at 60 points, has Mystic's team ability, animal, assassin, monster, mystical, path, soldier, vehicle, keywords. Not a very interesting looking dial here to start with, but you know, just eight movement phasing and flight, 10 attack, 18 defense, four damage is pretty nice. But he has a pilot trait for assassin or soldier keyworded characters. So there's some pretty great ones you can find with those two. And then uh, Headless Horseman can't be healed, and Headless Horseman takes a maximum of one damage from attacks. If the attacker can use Blades, Claws, Fangs, Exploit Weakness, Precision Strike, or has a positively modified damage value. So uh, if they have any one of like three powers or if they've somehow modified their damage value, which also means if they're using closer range combat expert, so it's kind of like five powers, or if they have somebody next to them, you know, using a power or enhancement, or if they're trying to hit you with an object or terrain or something like that, you know, all those kind of things that modify their damage. Uh, he will only take a one damage from, so that's pretty good to know. And then he's got leadership and probability control for his uh, special damage power there. That's pretty good. So yeah, I don't know. This guy definitely needs a good pilot to give him some good attack and damage powers. And you probably are going to need to equip him with um, a motorcycle or a hell cycle because you're going to want to give him, you know, charge or running shot or hypersonic or something so you can have some kind of moving attack. You also might want to put Frenchie on him to give him some stuff from Frenchie, uh, you know, that we took a look at in the commons that can either give him sidestep and close combat expert or like stealth with energy explosion and perplex. And I don't remember what the other one was, but you know, lots of good options from that. I think, yeah, I think if you get a good combo of Frenchie, um, a bike and a good pilot, he has uh, some potential there. He's got a good long dial for 60 points, but he's still going to be lacking defensively. Like you really just have to bank on your opponent having those powers. Otherwise he's literally got nothing. And even so, uh, they can just outwit that defense power so that would suck. So even if they do have those powers, they might just outwit that defense power. So overall, meh, you're pouring a lot of points into him to make him work. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really think he's worth it. Eight clicks isn't too bad though. He does get some sidestep and pulse wave there at the end. And you know, it's weird because his attack goes up, but his damage goes down. <laughs> so that kind of sucks. 
I don't know. I just feel like he's a character that you could kind of get some good use out of him, but he's going to take a lot of work for that. Uh, however, I will say, um, yeah, with Assassin and Soldier, uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen some people talk about putting, um, what is it, the Spider Supreme on him, and then when Spider Supreme would be KO'd, he gets to pull out, like, two more characters. Um, so, yeah, you kind of just do whatever you can with Headless Horseman until that happens and then you just kind of pour out a bunch of characters so that's actually probably a pretty good strategy if you wanted to do that um that way you know you got spider supreme and then if he gets ko'd they don't score him thankfully and then you get two more characters out of him to replace him and it's kind of just a ridiculous uh you know chain after that so that could be pretty awesome um but regardless uh still kind of feels like you're pouring a lot into him to make him work but he's only 60 points so i will give him that he's not a lot of points and he does have a long dial with Mystics, so they'll have to hit him a few times and hurt themselves. So yeah, I could definitely see him, you know, getting some use for sure. Like I said, you just have to put a lot of resources into him to make him work. But if you're willing to make him work, I think I think he could work pretty well. I think he would actually be pretty good then. If you're willing to do all that and pour that much extra points and everything into him, then yeah, he could be pretty good for sure. And I will say... Either way, he has an amazing sculpt, so at least there's that. Next up is another super rare that's very high on my list because I love the character, and that's Blade. Coming in again at 90 points. I don't know why they liked 90 points so much for this set, it feels like. I just feel like there's a lot of 90-point characters. And, uh, you know, we've been seeing so many cheaper characters than that recently that it just feels a little weird. But regardless, he has Mystics and Avengers TAs, four range double target, Avengers, Marvel Knights, Midnight Suns, Monster, Mystical, and Vehicle Keywords. Great selection there. Charge, 12 attack, 18 impervious, 3 damage exploit, improved movement for characters. He's got the pilot trait for blade or monster keyword. And obviously there's a lot of great monsters you can use to have uh, just pop out of him. I think uh, the number one there would probably be uh, the legacy card Hulk, who everybody wants to use for uh, Cap Wolf. So that right there is another great option, but that's a hard one to get. There's a lot of great monsters though, so it really doesn't matter. And there's a lot of great blades in this set. So there's uh, you know plenty of good options for his pilots. Then you have a uh, special attack power that gives him Blade's Claws Fangs. When Blade makes a close attack after resolutions, deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character adjacent to a hit character. Not bad. You get to kind of spread the damage out. Always good to get some free extra damage in. I love that. And then you have uh, combat reflexes and super senses, but increase the result plus one for each of the following that the attacker has or can use. Monster keyword, mystical keyword, and steel energy. So against the certain characters, um, he's going to get a plus three to that super senses. Um, that's pretty nuts. It's kind of funny because you kind of want to go around and deal with all the characters that don't have any of those first just to get them out of the way. So when he does take some damage, uh, by the time he gets onto that special super senses, it's going to be like impossible for whoever is left to actually uh, finish him off because he's going to have like plus two or plus three or whatever. Uh, and the prob and everything there too. So yeah, pretty awesome. You know, I got to have this figure because it's Blade on a motorcycle. He looks freaking awesome. Um, just looks like a really fun character. And I think he has some potential with, you know, having some pretty good pilot options. And uh, of course, you know, you can put Frenchie on him on top of that and you can still equip him with something else. The pilot characters with the vehicle keyword are so ridiculous just because... You know, you get the pilot, you get Frenchie, you can still equip with something. There's, They get so much stuff stacked on them, it's nuts. So it just makes him hard for him to not be good, honestly. So yeah, he's a super awesome figure, and I'm going to have to get my hands on one. All right, but up next, we've got one of my favorite figures of the whole set. One of the best and coolest figures of the whole set. The super rare Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. Popping a wheelie. Flinging that chain whip around. So freaking awesome. Vroom, vroom. Looks awesome. Love the sculpt on this one. Just so cool. And he has a great dial to match. So uh, team player and mystics team abilities. Defender is Heroes for Hire, Midnight Suns, Thunderbolts, Mystical, Ruler, and Vehicle keywords. Again, the pilot trait, this time for Ghost Rider or Midnight Suns which unfortunately I feel like doesn't have quite as many great options as some of the other pilots do. Um, I feel like this one's a little, a little more uh, specific, but 
regardless, he's still great even without having like a crazy overpowered pilot. Uh, he's got improved movement for elevated and characters, hypersonic, uh, poison, invincible, and four damage with leadership. Coming in at only 70 points. And then you've got this trait here that makes him so ridiculously great. And Ghost Rider and adjacent friendly characters can use their powers regardless of opposing effects. Protected Pulse Wave. So for him and all your friendlies adjacent, uh, they can't basically can't be outwitted. They can't, uh, you know, they can still use their powers even through a pulse wave. So if they have like toughness or something, they're not going to take any damage from that pulse wave, uh, which is pretty awesome. And it's just such a great effect to have um, just being able to be protected from anything that stops you from using your powers. Now, just note that that isn't the same thing as, uh, you know, if they hit you with exploit weakness when you got impervious, yeah, that's penetrating damage, which your impervious can't reduce. It's not stopping you from using the power. It's basically just getting around it in its own way. So uh, it's not going to stop something like that because that's not preventing you from using the power. You're still using impervious, but, you know, you're getting hit with something that it can't reduce with like penetrating blast or exploit. So not the same thing. So just that's one thing I want to note that I feel like might be confusing for some people, but it is still a very, very powerful trait to have. And then he also has this cool stuntman trait that gives him regen and willpower. And that's just traded. He has that all the time. So he can always just regen if he needs to. Uh, and when he makes an attack before rolling, you may choose that the roll can't be re-rolled or have its dice replaced. If you do, he deals penetrating damage and after resolutions, deal him one unavoidable damage if he missed all targets. So it's pretty cool uh, that... Uh, you can choose that it can't be re-rolled or specifically it can't be replaced. I love that because uh, I hate the figure, the, the Mr. Sinister figure from the X of Swords OP storyline thing. Um, that thing's so annoying, replacing your die to ones and everything, uh, making you crit miss or just miss in general. It just sucks. But yeah, I really love uh, the fact that you can say, mm, yeah, no, it's just not going to be able to be replaced. It sucks if you miss still, and then you take the unavoidable, but at least you can regen if you need to. Um, I kind of wish he had something more on his attack besides just the poison. Uh, but regardless, you know, maybe if he had some, some more on his damage too, like some close combat expert or uh, exploit or something, you know, I feel like maybe he could use a little more cool stuff in the dial, but it's still, you know, solid all the way down, good stats and powers, and I just really love that King of the Underworld trait, just so good, and Sculpt 10 out of 10, so one of my favorite figures of the set, very strong Ghost Rider, definitely has potential, um, oh, you know, and it also stops characters like uh, the Captain America on the Pegasus, who is really big right now, you know, everybody's talking about, you know, let's just play a bunch of Captain Americas on the Pegasus because they can all just hypersonic in there. They're only 40 points. And their special attack power just says that you can't use defense powers, which is really strong. And, uh, you know, I heard that idea tossed around a few times. You know, why not just run a bunch of caps, basically? Uh, which now, you know, this guy stops something stupid like that from happening. Um, also stops stuff like Scarlet Witch. So like in Silver Age, now that she's rotated, you know, those hex markers and everything preventing you from using any powers. Um, also, I think we still have Leech and we still have Cosmo in Modern Age. So there's that too, um, that prevent you from using powers. So he can say no to that too and just use his powers anyway. So very, very awesome. Um, one of my favorite figures of the whole set, like I said, one of the best figures. Finally, just like a counter counter to all those can't use effects. So yeah, not much point in saying much else about him. He's just amazing. 10 out of 10 figure for sure. All right, last but not least, thank you guys if you've stuck around this long. We have Phantom Rider who, you know, looks pretty cool. Got that all white suit and everything. I think this dude, he used to be named Ghost Rider. And then when they got the new Ghost Rider with the flaming head and everything, they changed his name to Phantom Rider to make him different or something. But anyway, still very cool. He's got animal, mystical, past, vehicle, and warrior keywords. Uh, mystics and team player team abilities are always good. He's got a uh, trait that gives him shape change and stealth, and when he uses shape change and succeeds, he can't be targeted this turn. That right there is really awesome. Uh, he just has to make one good shape change roll, and the whole team can't target him. Um, I have played this guy a couple times, and uh, it's he for some reason ends up being the last guy 
on the map every time. And uh, it feels so good to get that shape change because then their whole team just has to clear, can't do anything. Uh, but yeah, and then having the stealth is really nice too. But then he has once per turn for all characters with this trait, when Phantom Rider moves after resolutions, you may choose another friendly character with Rider in its name and move them up to four squares. So that's pretty great. Uh, I do like that to move my other Ghost Riders around. And he's coming in at 75 or 50 points. I've only played him myself at 50, but for 75, you got Running Shot, Toughness, Range Combat Expert. So he'd be a 12 for 4, not bad. And then just have a 17 Toughness with that Stealth and Shape change. Over here, you got some Phasing and Outwit. And uh, I like to put a motorcycle on him, so he's still got Running Shot. And I just like to move him around, you know, carry somebody because of the carry with the motorcycle. And then you get to move your other Ghost Riders four squares. So pretty good. And then he's a nice little like secondary range attacker and outwitter as well. Uh, but then he also has a trait that when he's KO'd, choose a friendly character. This game, the chosen character has range combat expert, shape change, and a minimum range value of four protected pulse wave. That's pretty awesome. I wonder if that's why he's always the last one to die. <laughs> I never get to use that. Um, actually, I think it's because he's not really a big threat until until the end. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's okay. Uh, like I said, I've used him a few times. He's fun for sure if you're using him on just like an all Ghost Rider team. And uh, pretty epic sculpt, you know, really big and everything. So the big cape, the horse, all, all very cool. Reminds me of the Moon Knight sculpt from the rares. I like the Moon Knight one a little bit better though, but this one's awesome too. Anyway, he's a fun figure. Um, probably not meta, unfortunately. I don't think he's good enough. He needs to do a few more things probably to be that good, but he's not bad, I will say. He definitely has a place on teams. Being able to move your other Ghost Riders is really good because a lot of them are, you know, double based, so they can't be TK'd or anything. So it's really nice to be able to do that. And besides that, he's just kind of a decent uh, range attacker. So he does have his uses and I do like him, but that's gonna do it for the super rares, you guys. Thanks for sticking with me. I know this was a pretty long one. If you did watch it and enjoy it, make sure you smash that like button because it does help me out a lot. And don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. Feel free to let me know all your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, but also if you like to help support the channel even more check the links in the description for the patreon or hit that join button down there for the youtube memberships either way for as little as just one dollar a month you can join in on our monthly giveaways and see your name here in the credits with everybody else so if that interests you make sure to check that out but that's going to do it for this one thank you guys so much for watching until next time this has been hero headquarters signing off